right then thank you everyone for joining joining this webinar you know i'm confident that this session will be valuable for each one of you so on that note let me introduce myself and get uh, things started i'm ajay responsible for client relationships and account management for pharma accounts at i2e i come with 14 years of experience all throughout into business development and account management so here is a glimpse of what we will cover today uh, a brief introduction to i2e introduction of today's speakers overview of the agenda and followed by the presentation and the demo and we'll also have short polls related to today's topic i encourage everyone here to participate being on you know about us we are a pharma focused it services company we started in 2010 in the us in connecticut we now have a presence in the us uk canada and india since our inception we have been a pharma focused company working with all segments of pharma now if you could see on the screen are a few clients that we are currently working with and since we are a consulting company we have partnered with many players in the market you know we are a microsoft certified gold partner you know we have also partners with aws and automation anywhere uh, we have experience in all the project management tools out there you know be it planisphere microsoft project online or planview and we are also premium partners with data iq you know one of the leading data science platforms or the ai platform that specializes in the field of data science and machine learning so what this translate into is we follow adaptive architecture offering you the flexibility to bring in your data uh, sources of choice your ai tool of choice and then incorporate them within our solutions i would also like to touch upon uh, the recognitions now in 2024 peak metrics assessment we were positioned as a major contender in the life science digital services specialist we have earned a spot on the inc 5000 list thrice and we have consistently received the great place to work award for three consecutive years so here is a brief about who we are what we do and i would i would like to quickly introduce today's speakers to now i'm pleased to introduce brian beatty who is the vice president ppm strategy here at i2e brian is a remarkable expert whose blend of business process acumen and technical prowess has set new industry standards you know he is known for his advocacy and strategic insights brian has driven numerous successful planisphere deployments so being a visionary leader brian excels in ppm client partnerships you know procurement vendor management and of course solution delivery so his strategic road maps have guided companies to grow to new heights and forged enduring partnerships and we also have another prominent speaker let me introduce angelo morello he is the c suite executive celebrated for shaping and steering top global organizations at the crossroads of digital transformation and innovation so with a proven track record in data driven strategies he has consistently enhanced operational efficiency and accelerated technology adoption so his success is underscored by leveraging rigorous analytics and deep customer insights to deliver exceptional results across various domains so here are our two speakers and yeah moving on the agenda for today's webinar is to spend some time on resource management and on what is allocate understanding the resource management challenges by identifying common obstacles and their impacts dig a little deeper on allocate you know exploring the benefits and the features a demo on allocate and in the interest of time we have dedicated the last 15 minutes to q&a so but yeah please feel free to drop your questions in the chat and we'll try our best to address them in the call or during the q&a and if time doesn't permit i ensure i'll get back to you or an email uh, with the answers to your questions All right brian would you like to take it ahead from here sure uh, thank you so much ajay for your two kind words of introduction and thank you to all our participants today joining on a topic that i'm very passionate about resource management and uh, as ajay has described the agenda i'll kick off by taking a step a little bit back 
going up to the 50,000 foot level and ask why the focus on resource management? Well, the reality is that uh, resource management is a critical component of what is commonly abbreviated as PPM, Portfolio and Project Management. We know it doesn't rate a letter in that abbreviation, yet we know that uh, it's something that uh, all of the clients that uh, I2E is working with, as Ajay described in the life sciences, put a, a lot of effort into uh, getting resource management done right. We do know, of course, that uh, companies are at different points in a maturity curve as they strive for an optimum approach to resource management. For example, uh, one company, uh, Sanofi, uh, was uh, uh, the first adopter of Planisware, a major enterprise uh, PPM tool that includes resource management. And its maturity level is such that it has that established an RMO, a resource management office with uh, dedicated team members entirely focused on the success of resource management. Of course, other companies are at different points on the spectrum as uh, they, they uh, put an emphasis on resource management because they do understand the, the clear benefits. B, there's no other driver of costs and efficiency than effectively managing your internal resources, being able to assign them to your uh, project plans and tasks uh, quickly and effectively, and then being able to see in a forward-looking uh, perspective what the forecast of the resource demand is, uh, what the cost would be, and what the allocation of those resources is to the to the projects and tasks that are in a, a cohort of projects that are, are underway and in flight. But why allocate? Where does it fit into uh, resource management in the life sciences? Well, the reason we're introducing allocate today as an application is because we see it as a complementary software product that sits on top of the enterprise layer. We're, we're targeting primarily functional lines, groups within large pharmas that have uh, highly uh, specialized needs to accomplish their resource management and uh, cannot really take advantage of enterprise uh, tools to the extent that they want to. Why is this the case? Well, when the company enterprise uh, introduces an enterprise tool, uh, for PPM, including resource management, decisions have to be made at that time, the best way to establish the data structures uh, and uh, how to size the, the uh, uh, software and, and server components appropriately so that it's performant. All of these decisions re result in uh, necessary um, compromises that uh, result in functional life leaders being tied in with functional plans, quite often linked or paired with cross-functional plans uh, at various points, but uh, having to uh, drive their resource management at that level, leaving a big gap because what these functional lines require is the in-depth detail to understand at a named resource level what are the assignments of their teams on, on, on projects? And where are the bottlenecks? Uh, wanting to understand proactively where they might be able to, to take decisions in order to ensure team members are assigned at a level that uh, allows the, the portfolio to move forward. And so that's really the driving force with, with Allocate to, to resolve that gap, to be a complementary product, especially for functional lines. And when, I'm, when I mention functional lines, I, I'm thinking in the life sciences context, typically of a pharmaceutical science organization or within PharmSci, the chemistry man, manufacturing and control group that is very focused on quality items a drug safety organization, perhaps medicinal chemistry would be a good candidate. And, and also the development group that uh, has responsibility for the management of multiple study plans 
functional plans that would be tied to the overarching cross-functional plan. So these are all great uh, use cases. And if time permits, we'll actually talk about one of the use cases later on. So Ajay, let's proceed to talk about some of the challenges that we've seen in the businesses uh, uh, have to grapple with um, as they proceed on their resource management journey. So starting off with disparate data, it's a key one because we see that data is, is often in many different locations within a large enterprise. There may be an enterprise data lake, there may be smaller divisional data lakes. Uh, sometimes they're connected uh, appropriately, sometimes they're not. We see some functional lines having to export data and work uh, uh, from Excel. And the result of this is quite often the, the data itself is not in aligned so that they can be effectively joined and surfaced and, and visualized in ways that uh, a functional line leader would require in order to make appropriate resource management decisions. Connected with that disparate data is the fact that uh, uh, what, if things are, are in uh, offline tools, that requires a great amount of time for uh, colleagues and others to, to perform manual data processing, to export data from one source, from one source and put it into a, a different tool to work with it there. And uh, you lose the, the one source of the truth that, uh, that people are looking at and you create unnecessary burdens on the time of the people that are, are, are doing this manual data processing. And of course, this drives a lack of visibility, the inability to uh, have a, a single view of where uh, a functional line stands with its team members um, and, and this is critical because these functional lines uh, often have sh short lead times in order to uh, align their resources to deliver against the strategy of, uh, of compounds that are approaching approval and need to get uh, out into the marketplace. So this can be a, a blocker to successful decision-making. A uh, lack of automated notifications. Yes, enterprise tools can do, uh, provide some automated notifications, but by providing the precision that Allocate provides with resource management, we're able to provide a, a team lead or project manager the detailed notifications that would re be really helpful at, a, at a, the level that they need. And, to, and lastly, and perhaps the real driving force here, is to extend beyond what normally would be at the enterprise level in many circumstances, um, resource management that ends at uh, what we say is the resource work type level, essentially at the level of the role of an individual, what role an individual plays in the organization, but not the name of that individual. The reason enterprise tools most often do not get down to that detailed level Again, the volume of data would be extensive, right? Too much, just too much information and providing little value for the kinds of decisions on a portfolio that an enterprise is looking to make. On the other hand, for a functional line, that named uh, resource information is extremely helpful. And that's the problem that Allocate is designed to solve. And Ajay, while our while our participants are are sharing their thoughts and rating uh, the challenges, I, I would just like to echo uh, and provide a corollary to Brian's opening comments. Um, if you think about best case scenario, we, most of us really strive for flawless execution. And one way you can articulate flawless ex execution in resource management is by knowing and having a rapid understanding of the number of people and the skill sets of the people within your organization and being able to provide the confidence across various time horizons, right? Less than a year, more than a year, uh, greater than two to five years. And that confidence ebbs as you get further out because there's so many complexities, um, again, as, as Brian had alluded to, regardless if they're regulatory or within the operations themselves. Um, and, and I would end with one of the things that resource management done effectively provides too is an operational 
um, capability that allows you to have effective skill constraint management so that you know if you have the right skills and the capacity internally and or if you have to go out and procure those skills and services, you can go forward uh, with, with your supporting lines to have the confidence of making sure you're, you're procuring the right skills and services at the right time. Uh, again, flawless execution, very complex in this space. And technologies like Allocate um, uh, definitely help to, to drive things forward. Good point, yeah. But Brian, uh, could we proceed further? Please. So what we will turn to now is specifically Allocate and discuss uh, the genesis, the rationale for creating it and its features and benefits. So Ajay, we can move to the next slide. Uh, what is it? Well, it's it's a tool to be added to your arsenal that is complementary to your existing enterprise tool set, but again, targeting a very specific gap in, in what those enterprise tools typically provide. It is uh, completely customizable uh, in its architecture. Uh, we would work with uh, our customers in order to ensure that uh, the data elements that are being surfaced are, are precisely what are most valuable to you. And uh, the, the even the, the color scheme, the branding of it, all of those items, we would work with you to, to uh, ensure a tight fit with your uh, existing business processes, but allows you to, to drill down into resource management in a way you've never been able to do so before. Um, this it's a scalable application where we understand it's a constant evolution of data in large organizations. Uh, many changes occur, reprioritizations of, of projects in the portfolio, uh, even acquisitions, uh, and of course, on the human resources side with uh, uh, people leaving, people coming in, new teams being established. We acknowledge this and we have designed Allocate to be able to easily accommodate uh, changes to the data and growth in the data, as well as providing seamless integration points with source systems, including the enterprise tools, uh, other tools that uh, can be brought in uh, to provide information on, uh, on timekeeping, on uh, meeting calendars, uh, there is a, a flexible list of options that you may decide to, do, to implement within Allocate uh, to ensure that it sits easily on your network. And it's a key point that this is an internal application that uh, you would operate. Uh, it's not being operated by I2E. The data stays within your organization. I would summarize them uh, by saying that we offer real-time resource allocation and progress tracking. The, the data can be refreshed uh, at a frequency of your choosing, pulling it in. And of course, uh, it, it has an interface that uh, project managers, uh, uh, team leads, and leaders can, can both view and based on their role or persona, can, can uh, use it, use the allocate to, um, make changes, do assignments, and to uh, understand what their teams are working on. Uh, that speaks to the second point where uh, we've created a, a multi-level functionality so that these personas that have different requirements and needs can all make effective use of the tool. Uh, but its, it's key feature, of course, is the ability to perform resource forecasting and capacity planning at the named user, down to the individual on the team, so that you have that precision that uh, is uh, is lacking and is desperately needed in some cases, so that uh, you understand what what individuals are working on as they drive your portfolio forward. Right. So uh, we we have the demo next, and before we get to the demo, I would like to understand. You know, if, you're, if our audience also think that allocate can be the missing piece in solving their resource allocation burdens. Absolutely. So what we're looking at, uh, we've got some screen representations of mocked up data of allocate uh, that uh, 
we will navigate through uh, in order to keep this webinar at a reasonable length, we're going to be highlighting only a, a subset of uh, possible functionality here. Uh, but there's much more and to uh, recommend if there's interest in seeing more of what Allocate can do, of course, we'll, we'll uh, be happy to follow up and Ajay will uh, share that information at the end. Uh, so this is the landing page or home page uh, that uh, a user would uh, arrive at when, when first opening Allocate. Uh, today, the, the persona that uh, we'll be uh, sharing uh, is Juniper, a, a team manager. So as we look through the screens uh, that uh, would be what Juniper would, would see, bear in mind that it's, it's going to be someone who is interested in understanding uh, what their team members are, are working on, uh, what tasks and projects they've been assigned to, and is looking for both the high level at a glance views that summarizes these activities and allocations and demand, as well as some more detailed information. So the landing page is designed to do exactly that, right? We have a, a quick view into um, all projects to which one or more of Juniper's team members are working. And we can, we can then proceed to uh, learn more information. And what I'm going to do is ask Ajay to navigate now to the all pro projects menu item on the uh, top menu bar so that we can see a, a, a textual table uh, representing the, the, the list of projects that Juniper's team members are assigned to. Again, we would have the, the same drill down capability. Uh, all of all the screens in Allocate uh, can, are highly filterable. The, each column can be uh, selected in order to filter, uh, as well as a search field uh, that uh, allows Juniper to enter text in order to uh, narrow down the, the list of information that is shown here. And so let's take a, a, a moment to do a drill down onto sample project three. Uh, and when that's open, we now see new tabs appearing uh, in the dark blue section of Allocate with information, uh, detailed information on that plan. Again, the columns uh, represented uh, above the data are, can be filtered as well as uh, uh, searched. Uh, and what we're showing here is both the forecast and allocation uh, at, from a quarterly view uh, moving forward. So this is still a, quite a high level view of, uh, of, the, of Juniper's team's activities and uh, the, the allocation of them into this, but we, we, can, we can proceed to different views of this data, such as the Gantt view, very common as we are aware with the uh, project management tools to be able to have uh, a quick view at uh, uh, and visualization here. So we can uh, get a quick view of, of, of the tasks color coded uh, appropriately showing when they are occurring and, and the, the linkages between them uh, showing uh, details on the left, uh, similar to a project management tool where we can we have a, a, a relatable visualization of uh, what uh, the team members are working on. But I'd like to move now to the flags tab. Ah, sorry, yes, that was actually a key point right there, the hoverovers that uh, didn't want to exclude that. This provides shortcuts to, uh, to Juniper um, as a project lead to, to make changes, to edit tasks, even to delete, and because of her role, um, she has that capability. Um, let's now proceed to the flags tab, where uh, this is a, something that uh, I2E has learned from our customers is, is highly desirable, to have uh, a tool that can uh, help identify uh, alerts and potential issues, bottlenecks in the future, uh, that need to be resolved. So that's the, the whole objective here and allocate uh, in, the, in the listing here shows the, the top three 
items that need resolution. Uh, to, and then Juniper could go, then go in, click on resolve, and uh, and get uh, whatever the issue is corrected proactively before it starts to impact the team's activities or the particular projects that they are working on. We could also move to the demand tab. And here is a view to show the, the planned and allocated uh, forward-looking uh, assignments on a on a month by month basis, uh, and these all all these screens could be scrollable vertically and horizontally to easily uh, have see the whole view. And uh, again, the point here is is for a clean and precise perspective on what's the what the team members are working on, and it can be aggregated in different ways. We can roll up as needed to the skill set or stay at a low level. Uh, we could also create project alerts at any point uh, so, so that if, if Juniper wants to be informed about a particular um, item that's upcoming, ensure that it's covered. But now let's uh, return to the aggregated views of things and click on the resources tab in the upper menu. So here, uh, these items, are all uh, aggregating the information uh, into the selected projects that are, are appropriate for Juniper. And uh, this is uh, one of my favorite views because it provides some, some key information. You see the color coding uh, to show the allocation by percentage uh, by uh, the individuals and projects that are, are available and of course, uh, the drill down capability is there as well. And uh, if we click now on an individual such as the top one, Thaddeus Finch, this is where we get the, the kinds of precise information that uh, is, you know, as you saw there with one click, we can now see in the top uh, bar graph, the allocation by month. We're sitting in July 2024, so we see uh, uh, the current month highlighted. And then the, the future allocation over uh, the upcoming time period, uh, as well as uh, down below a, a view by task, so that uh, for Thaddeus, we can see specifically what projects and what tasks within those projects are consuming his time and what, the, what his availability overall is. So we can um, return from this screen. And now let's proceed to uh, the calendar view. So a cal calendar format is uh, uh, something that uh, was requested uh, as our design team and developers uh, captured the requirements of, uh, of our initial launch here. On the left side, we can see uh, many different uh, checkboxes to allow filtering to uh, uh, change it by project, by a, a group of projects uh, within a particular cohort, uh, the location, the types. And again, these, these elements can be customized as needed. Uh, we won't uh, go through all of the tabs on this screen but we can change the view from by project to looking by resources, by task, uh, and also changing the, the time frame as well. Uh, also, the, the ability to export is uh, something that, uh, you know, if, if there is a need to uh, go to governance, to go have uh, meetings with managers, uh, have a quick export of views such as this uh, can be very helpful. And lastly, Ajay, if we proceed now to the timesheet view, um, this is, is, is often the, the nuts and bolts, but uh, here we can see the, the task from allocated projects. So uh, the, the recording of time spent on projects is extremely valuable when uh, you want to have a closed loop perspective of both work that has been completed and tie that and into a, a, an application that can also show 
the future demand and allocation. So that that's extremely compelling. And uh, down below, we have the capability of desire to link to Outlook meetings to help to automate uh, the this page and this view. So to reduce manual efforts of, of collecting what, what people are looking at. This is completely optional, but it shows one integration point that we found would be effective in, in collecting information to reduce manual effort. And with that, although there's much more we could uh, spend time on, I think uh, in the essence of time, let, let me uh, end our discussion on the demo and uh, we can proceed, Ajay, to what comes next. So, so, so Brian. Brian, I would just, I'm sorry, Ajay, I would just support the, the opening comments you made, Brian, that this, this solution provides a very different dynamic for the functional lines to engage with the PPM organizations. It actually gives them a lot more capability um, and ability to actually work with their with their teams in, in a way that traditionally they just haven't been able to do so. And and if you think about it from a PPM perspective, it allows the PPM team to take on higher value activities because a lot of the chasing of data at this level is now facilitated, more easily facilitated by the functional line management because they have the they have the ability to do so. Um, right at their fingertips. Right, so it's it's time for the uh, Q and A. Uh, you know, please put your questions in the Q and A box, and I'll read them out for the experts to answer. So the first question is: if if we already license an enterprise system for resource management, why do we need allocate? Ryan, would you like to take that up? Absolutely, that, that's a, a great question. And we certainly acknowledge the, the time and the investment needed to put an enterprise tool in place. Uh, and we're not suggesting anything different because of the importance of satisfying PPM, including resource management across the company and to get those total views that are needed. But that said, those uh, functional lines that uh, I mentioned, they, they really have additional needs uh, that are specific to, to their groups that are not necessarily 100% aligned with uh, what they're being told to do essentially in an enterprise tool. So we view Allocate as very complementary to existing infrastructures not diminishing their importance and, and criticality to the enterprise, but offering uh, a, a, a complementary layer in an application that uh, uh, maintains the data integrity across the enterprise, but allows the functional line to drill down a little deeper, a little more granular, and achieve the precision that uh, we believe they are looking for. Uh, in terms of the investment, uh, it, because of the design and, and work that has gone in up front, uh, the cost to implement would be a tiny, tiny fraction, of course, of an enterprise tool. So we, we're not uh, seeing any uh, obstacles from an investment perspective because we have designed this to be implemented uh, in a short time, uh, we would go through the standard process to make sure that uh, the requirements are uh, captured and any design design decisions that uh, need to be taken would be would be made. And of course, the the data connectors are established. But we're looking at a implementation time of a few months versus uh, a few years, typically to complete a multi-phase project to enterprise to implement a full enterprise solution. We have a lot of questions, so let me go to the next one. How customizable this tool is? What I mean is, can I remove the entire functionality or add another based on my specific need? Uh, well, certainly a tool like this is, is fully customizable. Um, it's, it's target, business value um, is this area of precision in resource management. 
And I'm not sure if the questioner is thinking of taking it in a completely different direction. Uh, if that was the case, I, I'd recommend a conversation with I2E because we have a practice lead in a practice area designed for analytics and creating uh, uh, tools and dashboards that can serve a multiple uh, multiple uh, purposes for a life sciences company. Uh, but I, I think the high level answer uh, from my perspective is that Allocate is designed to be customized based upon your data requirements, as well as your business requirements to visualize what is important to you. So the next question is, as pharma, ph pharmaceuticals contain a lot of sensitive and confidential data, how I2E is ensuring that data breaching will not occur? I can start and then Angelo, I, I know you have uh, put some thought into this as well. Uh, so Allocate is designed to be installed uh, within your local infrastructure, right? It's uh, I2E has no involvement with it. We're not hosting it. Uh, it, uh, it will be compliant to all of your local uh, IT and regulatory requirements. And uh, you have complete ownership uh, of it. Uh, and it's not requiring the creation of any additional data that you should not already have within existing systems. Uh, so um, it's, it's as secure as your network, which I would say is extremely secure because I'm well aware of the uh, amount of time and effort and money that uh, all large companies spend on cybersecurity to protect their assets internally and allocate would be uh, an internal asset in that sense. Angela, uh, feel free to uh, expand. Right, Ryan, I'll just I'll just expand on the the concept of of data governance really along that security thread. Um, so if we if we think about data governance of the data inside the system or inside the container, it really comes down to ensuring that we have the the appropriate uh, stakeholders within the organization. Uh, so. We've led off with this is a functional line solution, um, but functional lines are codependent with other lines upstream and downstream. And so as you think through how to keep this the data secure, those those stakeholders need to work through effective policy, procedure, and process to, to ensure that you're you're maintaining compliance with either personally identifiable data guidelines. Uh, for instance, like GDPR in Europe, in Europe or other uh, privacy type uh, questions. And again, because it is within your space, uh, the implementation of the solution, uh, the expectation should be and should be verified that it is complying with your established policies, procedures, and, and uh, processes. So I think there's, there's a fair amount of um, control that you, the client, have in establishing the security and the data governance within the space. There are a couple more questions, but before I get to the next question, uh, I wanted to address that we regularly host uh, insightful sessions, you know, addressing the industry's pressing concerns. Now to stay updated on the best practices, you know, upcoming events, we kindly invite you to follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our newsletters. Now, uh, your participation in the webinars would be greatly appreciated. So having said that, uh, Brian, uh, I have an answer to this question, but I would like to still read it out. Can I use this tool independent of the enterprise PPL tool? Yeah, it, 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 yes, you can. Uh, absolutely. Uh, because we've included the ability for uh, people to add data directly into the tool, edit data. So um, there are different use cases, I understand that. Uh, and if there is uh, no need for uh, an, uh, integration with an enterprise tool, we can either be more self-contained within the tool or limit its connection points to, to more local data sources that you may have in your organization. So I'm thinking here perhaps uh, I'm aware that uh, at some of our customers, uh, in addition to an enterprise data lake, they may, there may be a more a, a smaller 
one that serves a, a single division or or a business unit, for example, uh, that could be used as a data source. In addition to uh, if it, if the processes are such that uh, Excel is the tool of choice for maintaining currently, uh, we have ways of pulling in the data from that as well. Or, like I said, uh, maintaining it in, within within Allocate. To add to Brian's point, uh, we are more than happy to have a follow-on call to discuss this further as to how this could be implemented and how it could be of use to you. So, Angelo, there is this question for you. Uh, and then, Brian, please weigh in. Is it challenging to implement Allocate? So, from a technology perspective, it's a standard implementation uh, from an agile development uh, lifecycle management. The challenges historically, and, and again, I'll defer to Brian, really to me, come in the form of the change management that's required, the the training, the education, the communication, ensuring that uh, there is agreement from those that have to contribute and those that have to administer the application. Um, because if you don't have the participation, then it's truly another one of those systems that'll have inconsistency in this data. And if you don't have the consistency in the data and the quality in the data, then you will lose confidence quickly in the ability to forecast out the ability to manage. Um, but as far as a technical implementation, relatively straightforward. Uh, Brian, I'll defer to you for any additional comments. Yeah, I, I would agree with what you said, Angelo. Um, I would just add that uh, having business sponsorship uh, um, is the key to success in, in any project like this because it, it will uh, potentially uh, require rethinking existing business processes to achieve the position, right? And uh, make sure that that, that happens. Uh, but I would also mention that uh, we, we did not create Allocate as a system that uh, for, for experts with a steep learning curve. We, we adopted design principles that uh, make it very intuitive, very similar to other kinds of, of, of tools uh, where you can navigate through and uh, manage it uh, as effectively as we shared uh, in the demo today. So Brian, uh, here is a question from me, you know, since Allocate addresses a common gap in the resource management process, can we take a moment and talk about, you know, the case study that led to Allocate's creation? Maybe we can spend some time there. Oh, of course, happy to. Um, so it, it's with uh, one of the, the top 10 pharma companies, uh, I2E has had a relationship with them. Um, from the from the earliest days of I2E, we did its founding. So we have a deep experience with their business processes and organizational structures. So there, it was the, the farm side group that uh, first uh, showed the, uh, an interest in disability and uh, they really felt that their hands were uh, tied somewhat you know because as functional line owners they um, were working with the enterprise tools and that was working well for the enterprise but it, uh, they're the it was that group that uh, needed some information that they couldn't uh, uh, find at anywhere else and they needed some way to pull it together and to allow their leadership to, to manage their projects. So within FarmSide, in this group, there was both a, a small molecule and a large molecule group. And the small molecule, small molecule FarmSide group uh, was very interested in, in being in, in the vanguard and showing uh, others across the company of what, what can be done and the value that they get in managing their resources. In uh, cost-constrained times, particularly, it becomes even more critical to have the precision to ensure the effective uh, assignment and allocation of team members. And uh, it was out of this initial work with the pharmaceutical sciences organization that uh, uh, I2E then, in conversations with other customers, created a synthesis of of needs, uh, similar needs that are not unique to one one company in order to provide this solution. So we're down to the last couple of questions. Um, so what integrations are available with other tools? Uh, example, CRM, ERP, email, Is that, that's the question. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we touched on uh, email, certainly. Um, we, uh, we touched on, of course, the, the larger enterprise tools, uh, whether it be um, Planisware, Plan, uh, plan, where, plan View, et cetera. Um, the, uh, and, and there, are, if there's a need for, for example, in a development organization to uh, pull in data from a, a CTMS, quite commonly that that would be uh, a, a, an integration point as well. The, those are examples, of course. What we would do is uh, undertake uh, a level zero assessment, essentially, of understanding your infrastructure and what data points would be most relevant uh, for your needs, where the starting data framework exists in your current state, and then use what we can without reinventing the wheel to pull in those data points and then have allocate, uh, supersede and expand on the data with, within its tools. So um, anything, any data that is in a repository, including uh, potentially you know, things like SharePoint, uh, other sources are on the table here as integration points. So uh, there is a repeat of another question. Uh, which functional lines will get the most value from Allocate? Um, well, typically in the structure of uh, large life sciences, I would uh, start off probably in order of interest uh, with pharmaceutical science, as I mentioned, and just because that's our initial use case. Uh, but we have expanded it. Uh, drug safety, another functional line um, where they, they maintain talk studies and other studies that they, they have responsibility for. Uh, medicinal chem chemistry would be uh, a good candidate. Development organizations uh, uh, managing clinical studies, and these studies might be broken down into subsets as well, depending on on the approach taken by a, a particular company. Whether it's you know isolating study startup activities, then the actual conduct of the study itself. Uh, perhaps there's follow-up studies that uh, need to be uh, tracked as, as well. All of these uh, would be good candidates uh, initially. And, uh, and we're talking about uh, today uh, functional lines that are directly involved in the life cycle of, uh, of the drug process. But of course, there are other organizations uh, uh, that might be involved. There might be... Uh, the need to understand uh, contract uh, demand and forecast and collect that data of your contracted workforce. Uh, of course, CROs uh, are uh, a good candidate for a tool like Allocate as well because they would have similar needs. So th those are the, the, the top ones that uh, we were thinking of. Thanks, Brian. And for the other questions, uh, you know, in the interest of time, uh, we will we'll conclude the webinar, but I'll definitely get back to you over an email with the answers to the questions. And our team will also send the recording uh, as a new URL in an email at the earliest. You know, please feel free to revisit the webinar or forward it to your team members. And it would also be available on our website. Let me let me conclude today's uh, webinar. You know, uh, IT's Allocate provides uh, a comprehensive solution to the challenges of resource management, you know, with intuitive features for task allocation, you know, real-time progress tracking and efficient coordination. So Allocate empowers teams to optimize resource utilization and enhance project efficiency. So since it's user-friendly, the interface and diverse functionalities make it an invaluable tool for streamlining, you know, uh, resource management processes uh, across various projects and teams. So yeah, if you would like to discuss pharma resource management further, please feel free to reach out to me and we can have a deep dive session. And yeah, that concludes our webinar for today. I hope you found the information valuable and thank you all for your time and participation. We truly appreciate it. And Brian and Angelo, a special thanks to you for your insights, you know, and to the entire back-end team of I2E for making this webinar possible.
Cheers and talk to you all soon.